If you currently think that wireless charging is not going to take off with electric cars, then you need to watch this video. Wireless charging is now as good as wired charging. It's going to blow your mind at this new technology. It's absolutely incredible. And I am in no way exaggerating. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Let's go straight to it. Fully charged live. Make sure you're there this year. One of the shows, whether that's in Sydney or in Los Angeles or in London, love to see you. This new technology is incredible. And it proves that, well, Tesla was right. Wireless charging is the future of EVs. Researchers at Chalmers University in Sweden have developed an induction technology that can reach nearly 100% efficiency and charges at a 500 kilowatt speed, faster than any EV currently charges anywhere in the world. That puts it on par with wired charging. There's actually no advantage to wired charging in comparison to this new technology, which I'm almost certain will roll out within the next couple of years. The team say the system is so complete they can soon present it to the industry, especially since they smartly combine existing components. How is that possible? They combine existing components to make this give you 100%, nearly 100% efficiency. It's truly, truly mind blowing. The team at Chalmers says that the system has 98%, in fact, over 98% efficiency and DC transfers of 500 kilowatt per two square meters with a 15 centimeter air gap between the ground pad and the onboard pad. This corresponds to a loss of a mere 10 kilowatts. Truly incredible. The researchers are aware that numbers must be considered carefully. Professor Yu Zhong Lu who is in charge of the project at the Department of Electrical Engineering at Chalmers, concedes they were probably among the best in the world in terms of efficiency in this power class between 150 and 500 kilowatt. He says the trick to achieve these results and the reason why the technology is nearly ready for commercialization is that the Chalmers team uses existing, though in some ways novel, components all geared to carry and withstand higher frequencies needed to achieve high charging power. Now, I don't fully understand the way this technology works, but I have to say my mind is blown that this is even possible, that we can get wireless charging at these speeds. I mean, Nikola Tesla, this is that kind of level of genius. It's amazing. The future of EVs is truly mind blowing. Imagine just driving into your carport, your garage, driving down a road and charging while you drive at these kind of speeds. It's amazing. Professor Yu Zhong Lu adds that it was the rapid development of these components and materials in recent years that has opened new possibilities for electric cars. Electrive.com says that the frequency of the magnetic field is crucial. A key factor, they said, is that we now have access to high power semiconductors based on silicon carbide, so-called SIC components. Yu Zhong Lu explains, these have only been on the market for a few years and they allow us to use high voltage, higher temperature and much higher switching frequency compared to classic silicon based components. The frequency of the magnetic field is crucial since that sets the limit to how much power can be transferred between two coils of a given size. Previous wireless charging systems usually utilized frequencies of around 20 kilohertz, much like a normal stovetop. This left them bulky, said the team. The team said that they've worked with four times higher frequencies and this step to 80 hertz was making induction suddenly attractive and suddenly much more efficient. The researchers have been working with two companies based in the United States and Germany, which they consider leading in SIC technology. With them, rapid product development takes place towards even higher currents, voltages and effects. He calls these ever improving components enablers with a wide range of applications. We of course also know these. He says we of course also know these from inside electric vehicles. For inductive charging as proposed by Chalmers, there is another component reliant on frequency. 
the copper wires in the coil send out and receive the oscillating magnetic field that forms the actual bridge for the energy flow. Again, the goal is to use as high a frequency as possible. And this requires better coils to actually make this work. The Chalmers team now use braided copper wires consisting of up to 10,000 copper fibers, each only between 70 and 100 micrometers thick, much like a strand of hair. Such braids or so-called Litz wire have only been commercially available in the very last few years and are able to take much higher frequencies than previous copper cables. Yujing Lu mentions that a third example of technologies smartly combined by the team is the utilization of a new type of capacitor to add the reactive power that is a prerequisite for the coil to be able to build up a sufficiently powerful magnetic hold powerful enough to charge electric buses and ferries for example but not necessarily cars using drives an electric car but he says he did not see any use of induction charging yet i drive home i plug in it's no problem now clearly he thinks that it won't take off because it's easy to plug in but i disagree i think a lot of people would love to be able to drive in and not have to think about a plug at all Simply drive in and the process starts without you doing anything. As for the efficiency of nearly 100%, charging electric vehicles does contain several conversion steps between direct current or DC and alternating current or AC and between different voltage levels. So there can be some losses in that process, but that's completely different to the direct effect of the charging in and of itself. But you can also put it this way, losses occur whether you use ordinary conductive charging or charge with the help of induction. The efficiency we have now achieved means that the losses in inductive charging can be almost as low as with a conductive charging system. The difference is so small that in practice, it is undistinguishable. It is about one, maybe maximum 2%. The next step will be to bring the induction system into industrial and commercial use. The researchers mentioned ferries or lorries, buses, commercial vehicles that could be wirelessly charged without human or robotic help in the future. Wireless taxis, robotic taxis, charging themselves. This is amazing. And this is the future of the planet. I want to know, would you consider getting this? If, let's say, it costs you, I don't know, 1000 US dollars to install this into your garage, your carport, the place where you park, would you pay that for this charging speed? When you know it's going to give you the same charging as your wired charging, you just don't have to plug in every day. Is it actually worth it? Is it something you think will take off? I think it could actually take off if this is installed in roads or places where there's a lot of traffic. People sit at the lights for a long time. They can charge while they're sitting there. That's just my thought anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Have a great day. Bye-bye.